All right, chemistry, let's start chapter four, section two. And just as a reminder, we are in fact not going to go over section one. Okay, just for the sake of brevity, we're going to kick right into the quantum model of the atom. So you will hear me refer to certain ideas, especially the Bohr model of the atom, uh, that we haven't actually gone over. Now I'm going to do my best to give you just you know the bare minimum what you need to know about the Bohr model, but we are going to skip right to the quantum model of the atom so that we can move on to electron configurations. All right, let's get started. You have five objectives in this section. First, discuss Louis de Broglie's role in the development of the quantum model of the atom. Then compare and contrast the Bohr model and the quantum model of the atom. Again, the Bohr model is covered in section one. We're not going to do that together, but we are going to cover the quantum model of the atom. And then explain how Heisen the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the Schrodinger wave equation led to the idea of atomic orbitals. Next, list the four quantum numbers and describe their significance. And lastly, relate the number of sublevels corresponding to each of an atom's main energy levels, the number of orbitals per sublevel, and the number of orbitals per main energy level. All right, let's get started. First, we're going to do a quick recap of what the Bohr model looks like. Okay, uh, Bohr was very famous for coming up with the idea uh, based solely on hydrogen. Uh, that may be a fun factoid for you. The Bohr model of the atom only worked for a single electron system. Okay, so that would be hydrogen. And the reason that it worked is because he was able to describe and predict phenomena including an electron. See this blue orbiting uh, dot right here? An electron and he described it as moving around the nucleus in a concentric circle. What he was able to do was describe why l light or photons emitted from this atom had specific wavelengths. And his idea was each time this atom is absorbing a photon, which is a chunk of light, okay, the smallest unit of light possible, when you absorb this photon, all of that energy is put into this system. And this system, being at a higher energy level, causes this electron to jump to the next energy level out. Now, as you see, when that red squiggly line comes in, that is the photon being absorbed. It jumps up. When that photon is emitted or lost, it drops back down to that inner concentric level or concentric circle. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that there is no transition between the first energy level here and the second energy level. It is either in the first energy level or in the second energy level, never actually in between. Okay, uh, it's kind of like the uh, the shortest distance between two points is a uh, teleportation. Okay, we're not actually traveling between those two circles. So we have this concentric circle. Uh, idea describing where electrons and how electrons are traveling around the nucleus and so you've seen these other models of atoms throughout your educational career and these are based on the Bohr model of the atom. We have the central nucleus made up of uh, protons and neutrons and then you have negatively charged electrons moving around uh, in what was thought to be very similar to the orbitals that a planet would follow around the sun. Okay, so you see uh, the, the path of these electrons, not necessarily random, okay, they're at specific distances from, from the nucleus, but they're all kind of close to each other willy-nilly, you know, no uh, super specific complex uh, pathway there. But this is basically the Bohr atom of, or sorry, model of the atom. Now what threw a hitch in this giddy-up was the description of electrons not just as particles because they are particles they are physical things that exist uh, you know tangible things but they also are shown to exist as waves which is a little bit trippy and we're gonna have a hard time really wrapping our heads around that but we're gonna try to anyway so the French scientist Louis de Broglie suggested that electrons be considered waves confined to a space 
Now that's a very specific idea. Waves confined to a space. Not just waves, you know, period. That's the end of the idea. Waves confined to a space. And th those waves move within that confined space around the atomic nucleus. It followed that the electron waves could only exist at a specific frequency. And that goes hand in hand with, the, the, with that confined space idea. And when we get to a, a diagram, I'll talk a little bit more about that when you can see it happening. But right now, we'll just move on. According to the relationship, E equals, uh, is equal to HV, okay, and those variables, that is the big E is energy. That H is Planck's constant. It's actually a constant. It's a number. And V, which really should be uh, the Greek letter nu, stands for the frequency. And so what we see here, thinking back to our understanding of proportionalities and relationships, that the energy present in that photon depends on the frequency at which that uh, photon is vibrating. And so this speaks to those quantized energies of Bohr's orbits, right? And what, we, what we're talking about there is the fact that an energy can only exist on the inner circle or the outer, outer circle, but never in between. That's what we mean by quantized or discrete levels, okay? You're either on one or the other, never in between. And that was uh, uh, one of the, the big things that Bohr brought to the table was that idea of quantized or discrete levels, okay? So the, um, this uh, combining this equation equals Planck's constant times frequency and this idea of waves being confined to a space, we can see that idea in action. So, what we have here, electrons, like light waves, can be bent or diffracted. Okay, Electrons, they're particles, but they're also waves as well. And so, like any other wave, they can be bent or diffracted. Diffraction, okay, what that means, refers to the bending of a wave as it passes either the edge of an object or through a small opening. Okay? Kind of the bending of that wave around a corner, so to speak. Uh, electron beams, okay, like waves, can interfere with one another. Waves can show interference patterns. And so just like waves, electrons can do that as well. Interference occurs when waves overlap. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll get to some di diagrams where we'll be able to see that. But before I press pause here, I'd really like to highlight uh, or go back to this idea of electrons being waves confined to a space. Now, here, before I press play on this, uh, on this show right here, I want to point out that this electron right here is going to travel in a wave. It's going to go up and down, up been down across all of these orbitals okay but realize an entire wavelength is the up and the down part and back to normal so this node right here doesn't mark the end of the wavelength this is not one wavelength two nodes is one wavelength okay two nodes is one wavelength and so this uh, uh, these wavelengths have to be completed in order to come back to uh, not, not to rest, but come back to where they started. You can't have uh, a quarter of a wavelength. You can't have a third of a wavelength. You have to have a half a wavelength or nothing at all. Or should I say either half or whole wavelength. Okay? You can't have anything but that. So meaning you have, to you have to be able to come all the way back to a node. And if you can come all the way back to uh, a node, that means that that electron is not able to travel at that distance around the nucleus. It's either going to have to move further away from the nucleus so it can complete an extra half wavelength or uh, move uh, further away. Which one did I say first? So they're going to have to move closer to the nucleus so they can finish this wavelength or move further so it can complete an extra half wavelength. So let's see what Robot Lady has to say here. In 1924, Louis de Broglie proposed that electrons, like light, had properties of both particles and waves. De Broglie suggested that electrons be considered waves confined to the space around an atomic nucleus. De Broglie suggested that an electron would have a characteristic wavelength equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the particle. 
it followed that the electron waves could exist only at specific frequencies equal to energy divided by Planck's constant. These frequencies corresponded to specific energies, the quantized energies of Bohr's orbits. Three years after de Broglie's proposal, C.J. Davison and L. Germer discovered that electrons can be diffracted by a single crystal of nickel. This important discovery provided the first experimental confirmation of de Broglie's theory. All right, next up we're going to talk about the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle and Schrodinger Wave Equation. Now, before we talk about this idea, it's kind of simple uh, in its idea, but a little bit more complex in application. We'll try to look at it a little bit more closely. But before I do that, I want to uh, refer to something that you probably all heard of, Heisenberg, the, the TV show Breaking Bad, that is Walter White's alter ego that's how he's referred to in you know his, his, his crime world and I'm gonna come back to this because I think this is a, a great criminal name I think it's a great uh, criminal name uh, and I think it's lost on a lot of people uh, I think it's you know hats off to the writers here I think that was a great choice but let's talk about this principle so we can say why so the German physicist Werner Heisenberg proposed that any attempt to locate a specific electron with a photon, meaning see it, okay, like visibly, optically see it, knocks the electron off of its course. Wherever it was moving, it's now no longer moving to that destination. It's been knocked off its course. So what that means is the Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle states that it is impossible to determine simultaneously, meaning at the same time, both the position and the velocity of an electron or any other particle, uh, realistically any particle, uh, but, but functionally uh, particles that are this small, you know, on the, on the scale of, uh, of electrons. But that's the takeaway here. It is impossible to simultaneously know both the position and the velocity of an electron. Okay, you can't, you can know one, you can't know the other. And uh, if you know one with any increasing certainty, you know the other with decreasing certainty. The more you know one, the less you know the other. If you only kind of medium know one, then you can medium know the other. Okay. If you for sure know one, you'd have no clue about the other. And if you have no clue about one, the other uh, becomes more and more certain. So. Before we move on to the Schrodinger wave equation, why do I think that's such a great criminal name? Meaning, this character is unpredictable. You think you know something about this character, but on the other side of the coin, his alter ego, you know nothing about him. The more you know about one, the less you know about the other. So Walter White, this mild-mannered chemistry teacher, you know, living day to day, living the good life, the more you know about Walter White, the less you would believe that this individual was able to operate as Heisenberg. And the more you know about Heisenberg and how ruthless and cruel he was, the less you can fathom who Walter White is. You, you, the more you know one, the less you know the other. So again, it's a little aside, but I think you know that's, that's a really good uh, use of that name by uh, by the writers, and I think it's very appropriate because he's a chemistry teacher, right? I'm, te I'm a chemistry teacher. I'm teaching this. He would know uh, these exact, exact same things. So uh, I think that was nifty. Anywho, Schrodinger wave equation. In 1926, the Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger developed an equation that treated electrons in atoms like waves. Okay, and so we had Louis de Broglie come with the uh, uh, proposed that electrons ought to be treated like waves. Erwin Schrodinger actually came up with an equation that functionally did just that. Today, with the, uh, uh, with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the Schrodinger wave equation, um, I'm sorry, together with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the Schrodinger wave equation has laid the foundation for modern quantum theory. Okay, so these are the two most foundational ideas that allow us to function uh, in the quantum world, or at least try to understand things uh, that exist in the quantum world. So when I keep on saying the quantum world, quantum theory, quantum theory describes mathematically the wave particle, sorry, the wave properties of electrons or other very small particles. Okay, 
quantum because waves have a minimum size or, or, or uh, energy packet, energy size, a discrete unit, and we call those a quantum. Okay, You have one quantum, several quanta. And so when we say the quantum theory, we're really saying that we're applying these wave-like characteristics from, from light and other wave things to particles. That's, that's what makes this so uh, unique and, and groundbreaking is we're taking wave physics and applying them to particle things. So, electrons do not travel around the nucleus in neat orbits, okay, as Bohr had postulated. Not, you know, traveling in cute little ellipses or even perfect circles like planets around uh, a star. Instead, they exist in certain regions, which we now call orbitals, okay? Not the same word that they use to describe a planet going around a star. Orbitals describe electrons around a nucleus. An orbital is a three-dimensional region around the nucleus that indicates not the location of an electron, but the probable location of the electron. Okay, remember, you cannot know with certainty the, the, uh, uh, the position or the velocity of an electron at any time, right? That, that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So it's indicating probable locations, probable locations. So let's check for understanding before we wrap up here. Louis de Broglie was able to conclude that electrons also behave as waves because B, waves in a confined space have certain frequencies. There are only certain frequencies allowed. Next up, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that you can never know one and the other simultaneously, meaning location and momentum. All right, guys, uh, we're going to call it good there. We're going to pick up uh, with atomic orbitals and quantum numbers next time we meet. All right, guys, I will see you next period.